Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am very excited today because not only are you going to get to see my review of the Asus GL704 to your left, but I'm also going to be reviewing HID Evolution as well. HID Evolution is a third-party boutique, and that is where this chassis came from. They specialize in putting liquid metal on the CPU and the GPU. You can put Fuji Poly pads on there. There's a lot of customization that this particular company offers when you purchase a laptop through them. And you know what? The most common question that I am asked on my channel every single day is, Bob, I want you to put liquid metal on my laptop. When can I send it to you? And my response is, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. For one, I cannot be liable for that type of work. And two, the shipping for you to get that to me, for me to do the job and send it back, is far more expensive than the $95 upgrade it was on the GL704, as well as I don't have the time. Putting liquid metal on a machine and the prep work takes a lot of time. So with that said, HID Evolution does the works for you and it might have a lot of value to you. It sure does to me and not only that, but they even ship a uh, fresh Windows bloat-free kind of installation on a USB should you need it, even though it will come ready to go. Pretty awesome, great company. If I were to have my own third-party boutique store, I would pretty much kind of, you know, carbon copy what it is that they're offering. So with that said, have a look. Prices on this vary. I think this one decked out and spec'd out the way I have it is around $1,600, $1,700. Nonetheless, HID, <laughs> nice job. Greetings, folks. Meet the Asus GL704 from HID Evolution. This is a 17-inch thin bezel chassis weighing in at around 6.3 pounds. Features a absolutely gorgeous Full HD 144Hz panel at 3 milliseconds. The i7-8750H, a 6GB GTX 1060. Dual channel RAM, 16 gigs in total running at 2666. A 256GB Western Digital NVMe SSD coming at around 1500-1200 rewrite speeds respectively. Intel network interface card, the 9560, Intel's finest right there. Asus has done a little bit to tweak this as well, more on that later. The 4-cell 66 watt hour battery is good for 3.5 hours, no problems, just pay a little bit of respect to your brightness as well as your RGB. And what makes this particular chassis from HID Evolution so special is I had it spec'd out with liquid metal conducto knot on the CPU and GPU as well as Fuji Poly thermal pads. Let's have a look. I really like the port placement on the Asus GL704. Over on the left hand side we have a combination headphone microphone jack, three USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, a single HDMI port, a dual mode mini display port, and a LAN port. I really like the LAN port as the quick disconnect is located on the top. Very good quality of life feature here. I wish everyone did this. And of course the barrel power plug featuring a 180 watt brick. And over on the right hand side we have a full size memory card reader with decent read write speeds, a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, an exhaust vent, as well as the Kensington security lock. Zero I.O. on the rear of the chassis, but look at those copper fins to the exhaust vents on this chassis. That is absolutely gorgeous, and yes, I'm a sucker for copper. We'll definitely get another shot at this later when we take off the bottom panel. Decent sized rubber feet in the rear, slightly smaller on the front, and for how good this chassis cools, I was surprised how little of ventilation we have on the bottom. And can this be opened up with one thumb? Nope. Shame, shame, Asus. This hinge mechanism on this is incredibly stiff, but the chassis comes to life very quickly, so I can appreciate that. And check out the ROG logo. Very shiny. I love this brushed aluminum silver lid, as well as the white ROG logo that I have it set at right now. I don't know. It just, I think it looks incredible. And just for fun, I wanted to see the size comparison between the thin bezel 17.3 inch chassis compared to a more traditional 15.6 inch gaming notebook with the chunkier bezels. Now here we have a pretty small solo bag designed for 15.6 inch chassis. So I'm gonna take my standard 15.6 inch gaming laptop and it fits in there, no problem. Pretty tight fit. But now let's see if the Asus GL704 will fit, which is a 17.3 inch chassis. 
slides in there pretty good. Now this is a small bag, so if you work the zippers around the corners, it will fit. I personally don't recommend it. My point is, you should have no problem finding a 15.6 inch laptop bag or backpack that'll fit this particular chassis. It's just the one that I had on hand is relatively small. The keyboard deck is incredibly sturdy, uses a polycarbonate plastic. It has little to no flex whatsoever. The trackpad is small, but it is smooth as glass and uses Windows Precision drivers. We have dedicated buttons on left and right. Check out the keyboard. Listen to how quiet this is. We have four macro keys up top. Starting from left to right, you have volume down, then volume up, mute the microphone, and then the ROG key, which opens up the Armory Crate software. Right here, we have a little bit of intake ventilation and the power button. There's no Windows Hello on this laptop at all. Now the gorgeous display before you is 144 hertz at three milliseconds. It's IPS, full HD, and it is panel number AUO409D. Comes in at around 309 nits, 95% standard RGB, 70% NTSC, and 74% Adobe RGB post color calibration. I'll have a link in the description below for the post calibration ICC color profile. Now some manufacturers have figured out a way to get their webcam and microphone on top part of the thin bezel, but not here. Asus is putting it down at the bottom chin, but on the right hand side. Thankfully the microphone sounds pretty good. Have a listen for yourself. So the built-in 720p webcam and microphone are located on the bottom of the bezel and have been shifted over to the right. I have myself centered in front of the laptop how I would prefer, as well as the panel itself is on an angle that I would traditionally use. So at this point, it does cut off a bit of my head. The microphone, however, sounds fantastic. As far as picking up keystrokes, this is a very quiet keyboard. So you shouldn't have much of an issue there as far as annoying the other person on the other end. Perhaps the location of the webcam could be a bit odd, but again, the microphone is fantastic. The keyboard is quiet. The machine is quiet. Overall, the experience is above average, minus the webcam's location. The main piece of software for your Asus GL704, the one that will control all the RGB and the profiles for your fan and overclocks, is called Armory Crate. If it's not already pre-installed on your laptop, you will be able to find this from the Microsoft Store. Currently, it is in beta form, although it does work pretty well despite that. Once it's installed, you can access this by pressing the ROG key. The software then will pop up on your monitor. Pressing it again, however, will not close it or minimize that. You will have to do that manually. Once inside, we will start off with the different fan profiles. Now, don't mind all this stuff here. Let's keep it very simple for starters. We have five different modes. Windows mode does just that. It operates everything like it normally would in Windows mode. Of course, we have this set to balance per my usual. Silent mode will actually throttle the wattage of the CPU down to around one third. I do not recommend gaming on this. I will show examples of this later on in the video, but it is an excellent fan profile to run when you are using this thing unplugged or just want a normal office type quiet environment. It is absolutely quiet. Wonderful thing here. Balance mode actually works just like Windows mode, but I will explain the significance of this here in a second. And then of course, turbo mode will push the most wattage, overclock the, the GPU a little bit, things like that. It does seem to work pretty well. Manual mode will allow you to control your fan speed and percentage of the fan on the CPU and GPU independently. At this time, this can tend to be a little flaky, but to be honest with you, the only things you really need are balanced and turbo. And to be perfectly honest with you, balance will do the job just fine. But you will be able to cycle between silent, balanced, and turbo by pressing the function key and F5. You'll be able to recognize this because the F5 key will have a cute little fan blade on it. Unfortunately, when switching between these modes, there is no on-screen display that shows you exactly what you're running. So a lot of times you're going to have to alt-tab out. Nonetheless, the software does work pretty good. As a matter of fact, it may be a little bit more in-depth than it needs to be. 
Scrolling down over to your basic effects for your RGB, you of course have static, breathing, strobing, color cycle, rainbow. You can also have this RGB effect play to music, and then you can increase the speed from slow, medium to fast. There is a decent amount of RGB settings in here. My personal favorite, of course, is to use the customized setting. And then from within this particular tab, I will take all four zones, two, three, four, as well as the ROG logo here, which is on the back of the panel. And then on the left and right hand side of this light bar, right up front, I like to make everything nice and white, as you can see here. Very nice, very classy, and it is a pretty true to form white and not some very cool blue. Nice job on that, Asus. Below that, you will have all sorts of software shenanigans should you desire any of these. The Game Plus, the ROG Tweak, Game Visual, Sonic Studio, Sonic Radar, all sorts of fun little things. Me personally, I like to have the minimal amount of bloat possible. None of this stuff is particularly of interest of me, but I do like the fact that it is available, and a lot of people like XSplit and Gamecaster, and it's all right here at your fingertips. At the very bottom on the user center, now you can back up your game profile settings. Relatively basic stuff here. Personally, once I get this thing set up the way I want it, it's fire and forget. The audio has no problem whatsoever overpowering the fan acoustics. It's loud, it's clear, and it is very well balanced. Have a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally made it to my favorite part of the video, thermal testing. Starting with the GTX 1060, this is not a Max-Q, and the NVIDIA thermal throttle spec on this is 96 degrees Celsius. Asus has this set up in their chassis to 91 degrees Celsius, and we never get close to that whatsoever. What you are about to see is how this chassis performs with the several software profiles, how it works thermally, what kind of wattage is being pulled, what happens when you play a different game from Battlefield 5, such as Overwatch, as well as how does this chassis perform without any software whatsoever. The HID Evolution Liquid Metal Asus GL704, running no undervolt whatsoever here, just using the Turbo software. Excellent thermals with liquid metal combined with the dual channel RAM solution means we are getting great GPU utilization, excellent frame rate here with a medium, nice, high fidelity settings for Battlefield 5. What I really like about what I am seeing here is this at this point is relatively fire and forget. You have them install the liquid metal thermal application. Now I don't have to run throttle stop, do any sort of undervolting. Everything runs hard just the way you want it and maximum decibels are in the mid 50s, which is actually not too bad. But another good quality of life here is this is one of the coolest keyboards across the board, no pun intended, that I have tested on the channel so far. Rarely does any part of the keys themselves get above 30 degrees Celsius. All of this testing was done with an ambient temp between 70 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at this point, what we have here is an undervolt on the core and cache using throttle stop of negative 0.100. Pushing this much more would actually yield some WHEA errors. That meant we were needing a little bit more voltage. So Asus is running this a little bit closer to where it would blue screen compared to other vendors out there. I actually think this is a good decision on their part. The less I have to undervolt, if at all, the better in my opinion. Over many hours of testing, the undervolt really only brought temps down maybe a couple degrees, and in my opinion, that's sort of margin of error stuff. I really wouldn't even call this too much of an improvement. A lot of investigation on my part was done as well, and I had noticed that many others with this chassis really didn't get much out of undervolting it either. But do not mistake the tone of my voice as disappointment, as any time we can get essentially a fire and forget laptop, minimal amount of tweaking, this is a good thing. 
So far we know that turbo mode is fantastic, the keyboard deck stays nice and cool, so let's see what happens when we run this in silent mode. From my testing, it seems that whatever turbo mode wattage you were running, silent mode now wants to run this at about one third that, so check this out. So as you can see here, we went from a nice 45 watts down to around 15. This is a great fan setting, but it is not meant to be gamed on. So far we've covered turbo mode and silent mode, the third mode is balanced mode, and this might offer a nice happy medium for some of you. Runs at around 35 watts max pull, of course this is in CPU intensive titles, such as Battlefield 5. More on that shortly. So let's take this a step further now, and show that wattage, well, things may not always be what they seem. So here in Battlefield 5, I've chosen to use a much more wide open map. Typically maps like this you will get less GPU utilization as there's just less things for the GPU to render. And without an incredibly fast RAM and CPU, it's going to be very difficult to saturate that GPU. So I just laid prone, and when I did so, I alt-tabbed out and I set the profile from turbo over to balanced. And now we'll have a close look at our wattage up here in the top left-hand corner, and you will see it go from the mid to upper 40s and slowly work its way down into the mid-30s. So while we're now getting around 10 to 12 less watts, our frame rate is still around at 100 FPS, and our GPU frequency is still around 1800 megahertz. You see, every laptop is different, and I had a hunch that the software embedded into this chassis was integrated into this on a deep BIOS level, but the only way for me to find out was I needed an extra M.2 drive, I needed to install a fresh ISO, and completely eradicate all of the software on this machine, run it at absolute bare bones. Try this game again, and see what happens. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, here it is folks. We have frame rates running around 100 FPS roughly, and the wattage is around, what, 35, maybe 38 watts. There's no software running on this whatsoever. We also have GPU frequency around 1800. Not much has changed. We are running everything in the balanced mode, just as how I would run a laptop. So it would seem that Asus has their software integrated deep into the BIOS and has their BIOS perhaps set up to just run this type of wattage as it is and then they let their software do their shenanigans from there. Thank goodness this software works really good. But with that said, all the testing that I have done so far with turbo mode and balance mode really didn't yield a huge performance gain, if any at all. So what about where we're at right now, but taking the power plant from balanced and setting it to performance. Well, ask and thou shall receive. Let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll lay prone, we'll get the job done, and boom. As you can see, nothing changed. Everything is set to maximum performance, and the actual performance, frequencies, frame rates, everything stayed the same. So everything seems to be well integrated into the chassis using the software but at no point did i ever find using turbo mode yield any sort of positive result very strange and just one of those things where one laptop differs from the next i see no reason to not run this software as it is kind of required in order to get all of your rgbs working correctly and thank goodness asus has this software dialed in pretty good so now let's go back with the original hard drive, everything running the way Asus wants it to be run, and now let's try some testing within Overwatch. So now look what happens when you play something like Overwatch. Running turbo mode, everything is being pushed to its maximum, but check out the wattage here. You see, when you have these configured correctly, your laptop CPU is not going to max out its wattage right away, of course, especially in a game such as Overwatch. It's just not as CPU intensive as a Battlefield 5. But make no mistake here, people. Even though we're only pulling 35 watts, everything is running fantastic. Check out the GPU utilization. And dear lord, look at that frame rate. Now, of course, I have mixed settings that the tryhard in me wants to use with ultra and low and certain things turned off. Nonetheless, this title, of course, has no problem taking it 
advantage of this display, and there isn't anything you can do to get it to pull more wattage. This is not an issue, you just have to know what games pull what type of wattage. This is why I use Battlefield 1 and 5 for my thermal stress testing, as it does work these systems out in a manner harder than most anything else, and it does so in a realistic way. Furthermore, look what Silent Mode does with this particular game pulling wattage at around 10 versus the 15 that we were getting in Battlefield 5. Again, it seems to want to cut that around a third of what it once was pulling in Turbo. Nonetheless, point proven, Silent Mode is not an ideal way to play games, but you could probably get away with it in Overwatch, as it's just not the most stressful CPU title out there on the market. And now here we are in Balance Mode. Now running around 20 watts versus the 35 in performance mode, you will see the GPU utilization between balanced and performance to be relatively close. As a matter of fact, the lowest frame rate was actually higher in balanced mode than it was in performance mode, but nonetheless, if we're working averages here, it's pretty much the same thing. We're just pulling less wattage in balance mode. And here will come full circle in Overwatch, running everything at turbo mode. Now puts our wattage at around mid-30s. That's the most you're going to get out of this thing. Again, the 8750H is not really going to stretch its legs in this title. It's not being demanded a whole lot of. Nonetheless, frame rate here is absolutely nuts. Per the settings I use, you could run this game ultra, should you wish, and still get above, you know, 120, 144 FPS. So... Very good solution here, Asus. Your software is working fantastic. Of course, we have dual channel to help things along. Nonetheless, no complaints. Everything works wonderfully. So far, thermals on this chassis have been outstanding. So let's see what makes this thing tick. Because the GPU never going over mid-70s and the CPU barely into the lower 80s. Decibels in the mid-50s at the most. I'm curious. Here we are 11 screws away from revealing the guts on the Asus GL704. And out of those 11 screws, the two in the front corner are shorter than the rest. On the GL704, you want to take your plastic pry tool and pry right here on both sides. At this point, you will be able to unlatch everything near the exhaust vents, and then the rest of the bottom panel will come off with ease. And here we have the 66 watt hour battery your 2.5 inch drive bay, your single M.2 drive, pretty heavy duty cooler here, dual channel RAM, and Intel's finest network interface card, the 9560. Asus has modified the antennas on the 9560 by wiring them into the board and from there extending them to a few different locations. They're calling this some sort of quad antenna solution. It offers great range regardless of which way the laptop is facing, and so far, I definitely approve. And as with all Wi-Fi testing done on this channel, over half of my gameplay is on that network interface card. HID Evolution has yellow Capcom tape, very good choice of tape, especially on the PCB over on the CPU side. An excellent barrier choice when using liquid metal. And over on the GPU side for the GTX 1060, we have a nice foam barrier. Very good choice as the PCB surrounding the die on it has a braille-like raised contact points. Very good choice here, HID. And since I am a sucker for copper, I need a second here to admire the heat sinks. Mmm, so nice. So folks... What do you think of that? The combination of just how great this chassis performs on its own, you don't need to do anything to it, combined with what HID Evolution has done to this, makes it a joy to use, period, from start to finish in any aspect. The microphone is right here, and it's running right now. I barely hear it. It's just, just the subtle hum of those fans. Great chassis, stays nice and cool, HID Evolution's prep and liquid metal work is perfection. It's the best it can possibly, absolutely be. And in my opinion, if you're looking for a laptop and you want the works done to it, this is kind of your best solution, especially if you don't want to put liquid metal on yourself, which of course is going to void your warranty. And let's not forget the Asus GL704 is pretty awesome in its own right. It is one of the few plug-and-play fire and forget laptops that I have covered on the channel in all of 2018. So that's going to do it for now. Hope you enjoyed this review of both the Asus GL704 and HID Evolution. And this is Bob of All Trades. Peace out.